like it's going to take place. And my words to him was, Jesus said, Terry, till he comes. So we got to keep on keeping on. You don't give up. You just keep right on going. And you plan for tomorrow like today's your last day. Now, how in the world would you do that? Make sure you live it out right. Mary came unto the tomb of Jesus. The stone was moved. He had gone away. said, fear not, I know whom seek ye. He is risen this, she heard him say. Go, the stone is rolled back, go. The tomb is empty go to sit at my father's side. Oh yes, he's gone over death, triumphant gone. Sin is defeated gone. He lives forevermore. My friend, if you don't know my risen Savior, I beg of you, don't wait too late to pray. Don't wait until the bride has been completed. Don't wait until you hear him say too late. For he is gone. The stone is rolled back gone. The tomb is empty gone To sit at the Father's side Oh yes, he's gone Over death, triumphant gone Sin is defeated gone And he lives forevermore Gone over death, triumphant gone. Sin is defeated, gone, and he lives forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Dad, have you got something you want to say? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, Don, you got a message tonight? That we as humans could never pay a debt for sin. 
It is impossible for you as a natural man or woman, it is impossible for you to pay for your sin nature. Couldn't happen. When Adam chose to give up his life that his bride would be saved as a symbolic what Christ would have to come and do for us to be saved, it was, it was that he could not ever redeem that man. Once it went to a fallen state, it was in a fallen state forever unless a Redeemer was to come. And if we can understand that when He hung on the cross, that the Bible said when He said it is finished, that accomplished everything that we would ever need if we could just learn to accept by His grace we are set free. But the trouble about it is is that Satan is sin nature and he's always reminding us of our past of a dead man. So therefore, we very seldom ever get to the point that we truly, truly forgive or set loose inside of us that Christ is risen, the hope of glory, and that we no longer have a sin nature. Huh? We always go back on that and we're so quick to judge others too. Well, if you was a Christian, if you was a Christian, you wouldn't bring it up. Jesus said, where is your accuser? Accusers. She said, I don't have none. He said, neither do I. Just go and sin no more. And he hadn't even come to the point that he had given his life yet but he knew that he would. Titus chapter 2. We'll see what this has to say. Chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, But speak thou of the things which become sound doctrine. If you, of course we was on this little subject a little bit ago, a few minutes ago. If you are talking about someone, is that sound doctrine? That's stirring up a fight. Brother Don says, leave it alone. Huh? Leave it alone. Well, I just got to say it. No, leave it alone. Don't stir it up. You might be able to win them Christ. Paul said, I become all things to all men that I might win them Christ. My cousins asked me the other day, said, what religion are you? Well, you know, I'm not no religion. I don't like religion. Religion will send you straight to hell. You get caught up in traditions of men, it'll send you straight to hell. And I, when I gave them that scripture, I said, Apostle Paul said, be all things to all men that you might win them Christ. If I'm dealing with a, a good old Baptist boy, I'm a good old Baptist boy. If I'm dealing with a church of God, I'm dealing with I'm a church of God. If I'm dealing with a Catholic, I'll learn something about Catholicism. Huh? I will become all things to all men that I might win them Christ. What is Christ? The anointing. It supersedes religion and doctrines. It supersedes all that from the Almighty and we become entrusted and founded inside of His mind which is the anointing of God. So we become all things to all men. That we might win them the anointing because that would change their religious status. So I finally, I said, what I tell people is I'm a kingdom person. And that's what I do. Jesus, man, kingdom. The law and the prophets was up until John, but since then the kingdom's been preached. All right. Now we're going to get into some instructions here. People don't like instructions. I didn't choose this scripture out. I've not studied today. I opened the Bible. This is where it fell. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, 
And I hope that means have some temper along the way because sometimes I have to show my ignorance like I did today. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity. And here's where I mess up, in patience. I don't have much patience. I never even named none of my children patient because I didn't have none. I named one Beth Angel and I named one Celeste for a celestial being. And I got a belt to keep them that way. Keep one a celestial being and the other an angel. If they get out of that, then we got the correction. Now then, <clears throat> us being men, we got to be sound in it, solid. When everything comes against us, be to the point that we're willing to stand for God and not move. Now, there's one thing, if it doesn't really mean nothing, don't fight. If it's not a salvational issue, you don't need to be fighting over it. If it's something that is just doctrinal issues, you don't need to get into that. If they want to learn, they'll come and ask questions. You don't have to demeanor them and put them down. And Celeste, I will remind you, I will take care of you if I have to. I've got my eyes on you. Brother Richard can turn around and take a hickory if he has to. The aged men to be sober and grave. Make a stand. Sort of. Think about what your daddies was and your granddaddies and your great-granddaddies. They were men. They were real men. They didn't have a weak backbone. And when they said something, they meant it. Maybe we just need to brush over these next two scriptures real quick. You reckon? The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior. <laughs> Maybe I get my glasses out. I want to make sure, Christian, I read these right. When you start preaching, Christian, I want to lay this foundation down. You'll know what I'm talking about. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers. <laughs> not false accusers. Not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Why in the world would it not go back up to the man and tell him to, you know, to be a teacher of good things? For women do most of the teaching. They do. They teach children. That's how, they, they're they're the, the mothers at home. So they bring it up. So they're accustomed to that. They're used to that. So in the process of it, they are apt to do this kind of thing. And that's, a, that's one thing that women do get in trouble about because all of a sudden they'll forget that they're not talking to a little child and they'll start trying to teach a man, which is totally against what the Scripture says. Not giving them much wine, teachers of good things. Huh? How many of you teach your children to go around and talk about other people? Huh? If you're doing it in front of them, you're teaching them to do it because they're just going to copy your, your actions. How many of you teach your children to put other people down? If you're doing it, you're teaching it to them. How many of you teach your children how to dress right, talk right, act right, live right? If you're doing it in front of them, you're teaching them this. Isn't that right, Josh? Say amen. Amen. He knows. Whatever we do in front of the others, that's what they always pick up on. And you know, my mama always said, little ears don't need to be in big mouth conversations. 
when adults was talking, you know, it used to be children went on out another way. They went out in the yard and played with the chickens. Got pecked a little bit. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Is there any age women in here teaching the young women? Let the aged women teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. <laughs> I had more women come up and try to tell me the reasons why they was going to divorce that sorry no account husband that they had. To love their children. This is something that has to be taught, especially in the world that we live in today. People don't love their children. Mothers don't love their children. They rather have a job. They rather have money. They rather have anything but a family. And the daddies, you don't have no idea who the daddy even is in the world that we live in. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Don't shake your head at me, Evelyn. That's what the Word says, not what Greg says. Young men, okay. Likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. That means solid, clear thinking. It doesn't mean don't, don't be out and be a drunk. You don't go out and be a drunk. It just means sober-minded. You, you think clearly. You speak clearly. You look at a man eyeball to eyeball and when you give him your word, you don't have to worry about signing a contract because you're going to be a man about it and do what you say you're going to do. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Now, Christ came that we have no sin. If we take these things right here, there's no sin inside of us. Male or female, none exist if we'll just go by the letter of this word and begin to live according to the spirit of the word of the letter then it will give us a righteous walk with God for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to who? all men all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world right now it's the way we want to live. doesn't matter if you're Christian's age or if you're my age or if you're dad's age. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Word anointed. It's the Savior, that Word, this Word, when it's anointed, it's what saves us. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous, of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. A pretty good lesson tonight, wasn't it? Pretty good lesson. That Christ know that we as sin nature could not defeat sin nature. So he hung on a cross and he defeated sin nature and he gave us just a few little old words of guidelines from old Titus right there, that if we would walk according to those scriptures, just, just a few things, that it would produce a righteous life. And it would teach us how to instruct others and in how to live in a perfect world. Huh? That's what I'm striving for, Christian. I'm striving for you and Josh and you young men that y'all will be able to live in a perfect world, not a corrupt world as it is that I've had to come up in, but a perfect world that all things are made righteous unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap.